more than 10 years, Catherine Daniel worked as a flight attendant. Now she's taking a break from that career to spend time at home in Dover, New Hampshire with her baby son, Jared. Catherine was closely monitored during her pregnancy. She wanted to make sure the physical demands of being a flight attendant wouldn't harm her baby. I didn't want to work during my last trimester just because you get so much bigger and I, you know, it's very tight on these airplanes and you hit things anyway, you know. I mean, I can't walk down the aisle without my hips hitting people and think what my belly's gonna do, you know. So I, I think I thought more of that kind of convenience of, of fitting on the airplane more than anything else. <laughs> For most pregnant women, flying is almost always safe. Women who are in the later stages of pregnancy should check with their airline carrier about travel rules. Most airlines allow pregnant women to fly until about 36 weeks of pregnancy. Airline industry policy requires flight attendants to have a physician sign off on their health status during pregnancy. Catherine's OBGYN, Mark Shag, is with Harbor Women's Health in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Generally in the 20 to 26 week range, at that point there's a form to be filled out or a letter advising that they stop working, they're allowed to do that um, for the duration of the pregnancy. But they don't, I've never seen an airline require or even ask a woman to work in the third trimester at all. I think they're aware of the physical, that's a physical job and you know, that they don't require women to do that. But it's not just the physical demands of the job. Airline travel exposes everyone to cosmic radiation, but it's more intense on the crew because of the exposure over multiple flights. So for a pregnant flight attendant, the risk to her and her baby's health needs to be discussed with her doctor. I may have known kind of intellectually that it existed, but as far as knowing any breadth of information about it, no. And I think that flight attendants on the whole do tend to put any fears that they have, because there are so many nowadays, um, somewhere else, somewhere that they don't really have to think about it. Rob Barish is a PhD at the Lenox Hill Heart and Vascular Institute in New York City. Dr. Barish says the level of radiation increases with the altitude of the plane. At approximately 35,000 feet or so, you're getting the equivalent of about one chest x-ray every three hours on an airplane. In Europe, if you're a flight attendant and you declare yourself to be pregnant, they take you out of the air because that one millisievert limit, which represents the non-occupational dose and therefore the dose that a fetus can get, uh, can be easily reached in a very short amount of flying time. And so in order to protect the pregnant flight attendant, the European carriers basically ground them but continue to pay them. In 2000, European air carriers adopted this policy in an effort to protect pregnant crew members. Patricia Fren, president of the Flight Attendants Union here in the U.S., believes the policy should be proof that cosmic radiation is an issue to be taken seriously. The guidelines are similar, but the problem is there isn't uh, a definitive policy uh, in this country to both inform flight attendants of the potential health risks and, or to give them the option that our European sisters and brothers have, which is to adjust their schedule uh, if necessary uh, in order to minimize those health risks. That does not exist in this country. Dinkar Mokadam is an occupational safety and health specialist with the Flight Attendants Union. He has headed up the effort to educate flight attendants about cosmic radiation with the latest publications on its website. The exposure is always cumulative, so the more time you spend in the air, the more dose you're going to get. There is the potential for cancer, there is a potential for genetic mutations of the fetus, and for structural abnormalities that come about after birth because of these uh, possible mut mutations. Catherine is relieved that she didn't continue to fly past the fifth month of her pregnancy. Playing with her healthy baby boy reminds her that the decision was well worth it. Even though I had an okay pregnancy and, you know, he's healthy and happy and developing just fine, there are some things you just don't ever know until the time that it, it presents itself.
Catherine plans on continuing to get the word out about cosmic radiation, especially when it comes to her fellow flight attendants. She believes the health concerns are important to everyone, whether they plan on having a family or not. From my own point of view, I plan on getting that information out as much as I can. Um, and then hopefully every person that I talk to can get someone else to know about it a little bit more so that we kind of educate ourselves because that's the only way it's really going to happen. Rob Barish agrees. He says it's an occupational as well as a basic health right to be informed about risks in the work environment. I think that the most important thing that needs to be done is to take an advisory by the FAA, an advisory on crew member education on radiation exposure, which said crew members should be told about this. They should be told about the pregnancy risks. They should be told about the risk to themselves as adults from radiation exposure and convert that to a regulation in which they are required to be told.